Mr. Speaker, I rise to lead the debate on a very short bill entitled, shortly entitled, the Money Services Amendment Bill 2019, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the <clears throat> first reading, as I understand it, of this bill, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> was done on the 30th of July, 2019. And Mr. Speaker, the Parent Act for this bill goes back to Act Number 26 of 2008. And Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> it came into force, the Parent Act on the 1st of October in 2008, and then was amended by Act Number 22 of 2009. And we are here today, Mr. Speaker, to make a few small amendments and adjustments to the Parent Act. But although small, Mr. Speaker, are significant. And Mr. Speaker, as <clears throat> our country evolves, and as any particular sector matures, from time to time, challenges arise. From time to time, problems arise on any particular bill, be it this bill or be it another bill, Mr. Speaker. And this particular area is really a, an evolving area. And we are not only guided by our own particular landscape in St. Kitts and Davis, but one has to change at times to conform to the international dictates. And so it has become necessary to have a closer look at this particular bill, Mr. Speaker, and make some legislative adjustments or amendments today once the Honorable House accepts those amendments, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, as the trends <clears throat> evolve in our financial sector in St. Kitts and Davis, this government has made it our priority to ensure that every bit of legislation is kept up to date, every bit of legislation keeps a pace with <clears throat> what we would consider to be proper regulatory measures and to make sure that the supervisory element when it comes to these particular bits of legislation Mr. Speaker, is constantly improved while at the same time, while we're improving these particular bits of legislation, that we make sure that the interests of the general public is also protected. And Mr. Speaker, with respect to this particular bit of legislation, I'm advised that a close examination of the services provided by companies in this area has been undertaken by our technicians, our technical persons, who would have looked at various companies in St. Kitts and Nevis who are licensed under the Money Services Business Act. And they have looked at whether or not the needs of the customers, those who are using the services of the businesses under this act, whether there were any measures that could have been required to enhance the overall operations of not only the institutions existed in the Federation, but to make sure that the, the, the individuals who use the services are also satisfied, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the, the data 
that has been produced on this sector, it really highlighted, Mr. Speaker, that the money services business operators in St. Kitts and Nevis serves a significant portion of the population in St. Kitts and Nevis. And persons may ask, well, how this is? So the fact of the matter is real, Mr. Speaker, that there are a significant portion of the population who may find it difficult to get services through the traditional lending institutions. And so they use the companies that have a more accessible uh, form of business to get required capital. And so we have to make sure that we protect these persons who use these services, Mr. Speaker. And as a consequence of this, our efforts in this government, Mr. Speaker, must make sure that we use the appropriate measures and we put the appropriate measures in place to make sure we safeguard the interests of those persons who are using these particular companies, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, with the technical teams going to work, they have studied the financial reports produced on this sector. And after close examination of the growth of the sector, Mr. Speaker, recorded over the last three years, a comprehensive review of the Money Services Business Act had been looked at in order to ensure that it keeps a pace with the industry, Mr. Speaker. As a consequence of that, Mr. Speaker, you have before you, Mr. Speaker, the bill that seeks to do a few amendments, a few adjustments, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the legislation keeps a pace with the reality, Mr. Speaker. This bill clearly only has 15 sections to it, Mr. Speaker. And I will advert my mind to about four or five of the significant amendments that is being sought, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that some individuals find difficulty when trying to obtain funding from the more established financial institutions. And so we are therefore seeking to provide another option for our developing entrepreneurs and to alleviate this obstacle being faced primarily by sole proprietors and small enterprises in St. Kitts and Nevis. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, we come to the First Amendment, which is in Section 3 of the bill before you, Mr. Speaker. And in that Section 3, Mr. Speaker, the intention is to amend section two of the parent legislation. And simply put, Mr. Speaker, the parent legislation in its section two was only allowing individuals to be able to borrow money from the lending institutions. This bill now seeks to amend the section by allowing small businesses to also be able to borrow money from these lending institutions. Additionally, when an individual borrowed from the lending institutions, they were only allowed to borrow up to $5,000. The legislation in its amendment is allowing now 
small entrepreneurs, small companies to borrow up to $50,000. So it recognized in the amending section, Mr. Speaker, if I may be allowed, it says in section 2A, inserting immediately after the definition of licensee, the following new definition as follows. Microfinancing and lending means a short-term financial facility in the form of a business or personal loan not exceeding $50,000, made to individuals or entities without collateral. And so that section has been improved upon to ensure that not only individuals are allowed to borrow, but young entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs, are able now to go to these lending institutions and borrow up to $50,000. I would, however, Mr. Speaker, like to, to caution individuals that the opportunity is being provided to give them a more favorable position when it comes to lending and ought not to be taken as a, a means for poor financial management and abuse of this position, Mr. Speaker. It is expected that persons would employ sound financial measures and really demonstrate prudent practices in order to meet such obligations, Mr. Speaker. The second thing, Mr. Speaker, is that the bill addresses measures to improve not only the regulatory provisions, but the supervisory framework of the entities that are licensed to conduct money service business in our federation, Mr. Speaker. An effective regulation contemplates a framework that will promote the expansion of businesses while at the same time ensuring that this expansion is facilitated with a robust system of rules and regulations to guide the process. And so therefore, Mr. Speaker, in seeking to arrive at such an effective framework, there is need for consistent monitoring of the way in which licensed entities operate and how they perform overall, Mr. Speaker. An effective supervisory and regulatory framework also requires, Mr. Speaker, the implementation of best practices to protect the overall integrity of the financial services sector in the Federation. This would include, Mr. Speaker, consideration of the needs and the interests of the public, of course, who would use this system of financing as well, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if we look at the other important section of amendment, Mr. Speaker, I would turn then to section five of this bill, which seeks to amend section six of the Parent Act. And it amends section six, Mr. Speaker, the Parent Act by <coughs> inserting a new subsection five and indicating it is 5A in this way, Mr. Speaker. 5A now says that in considering whether a matter is in the public interest, the authority may have regard to the following. And it sets out three areas in which the authority would look to, Mr. Speaker. It says, A, the need to safeguard the interests of the consuming public. B, the impact of the overall integrity of the financial sector within the Federation. And C, any other matters that the authority considers material to the management of the financial services sector within the Federation. And so therefore, you recognize, Mr. Speaker, that the Act seeks to ensure that the financial integrity of the Federation 
is kept intact, Mr. Speaker. Very, very important, Mr. Speaker. And so, <clears throat> even at the same time, while we are ensuring that the interests of the consuming public remains intact, Mr. Speaker, at the same time, we are also ensuring that the financial integrity is paramount, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> what I should have adverted our mind to, Mr. Speaker, is that in, in section two that we are also seeking to amend, the Parent Act in that body of law, Mr. Speaker, only dealt with what they considered to be, and I quote here, pay, pay the advances. And so that position has changed in terms of its, in the interpretation sec section, Mr. Speaker, that that has now been, my words, upgraded to what we call microfinancing and lending, Mr. Speaker. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> the bill seeks to introduce in the Schedule 5, which has now been added, if we go to Section 15 of the Act, a new Schedule 5 has been added, Mr. Speaker. And Schedule 5 of the particular bit of legislation now outlines the class of licensee or the class of license. So you have a class A, you have a class B, a class C, D, and E, and gives that the, the capital requirement for anybody seeking to license under that particular class. But what is important, Mr. Speaker, in this regard is uh, column three, which indicates the statutory deposit payable when it deals with the item on the class A, and it shows that 30% of the capital amount that is to be put up, which is the $50,000 or 30% 30 of $50,000, must be on deposit if you are performing a business that is a class A license, <coughs> Mr. Speaker. That's very important because it means that the, it gives the regulators an opportunity to regulate these business more, Mr. Speaker. The bill also seeks to provide, Mr. Speaker, a basis where the licensed entities would be encouraged to comply with the regulatory framework. And uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, how are they encouraged? This act sets up certain penalties, Mr. Speaker, to ensure uh, that the businesses comply. And so, for example, when we look at section 10 in this bill, it amends uh, section 19. And the particular portion that I would wish to, to advert our minds to is uh, 10C where a new subsection three has been introduced, where it says that where a licensee fails to submit a quarterly report within the time stipulated pursuant to the provisions of this section, then a fee of $100 shall be payable by the licensee for each day on which the quarterly report remains outstanding. So it sets up a penalty for the businesses operating to say, well, look, if you fail to submit your quarterly reports, we are going to penalize you in terms of $100 per day. And so this, again, is to ensure uh, that the businesses comply with the legislation. And it also goes on to the section, section D, which says that notwithstanding the provisions of sub subsection 3, that's the one I just read, a licensee who fails to file a quarterly return commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $50,000 or to imprisonment for a term of two years 
or to both such fine and imprisonment. Here again, Mr. Speaker, that the, the particular bill is trying to ensure that companies who are in the business for which this bill relates are kept in tune and regulated in such a way and fined in such a way to ensure that they comply with the different areas of regulations, Mr. Speaker. You would recognize also, Mr. Speaker, that when we go to Section 9 of the bill, it amends Section 18, of course, again, ensuring that the international standards to which we are expected to keep, uh, that we are regulated in that way. Because the amendment of Section 18, Mr. Speaker, reads that the Act is amended in Section 18 in Subsection 3 by replacing the expression 2001 issued to pursuant to the Proceeds of Crime Act 2000 with the expression anti-money laundering regulations, anti-terrorism, prevention of terrorist financing regulation, and the financial services implementation of industrial standards. Again, Mr. Speaker, ensuring that the, the various companies that operate within this industry, that they adhere to the international standards, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, this bill shows that there's part of the critical aspect of it is to ensure a high level of not only compliance, but a high level of accountability, Mr. Speaker. And these types of measures are intended to promote soundness and integrity of the financial services sector, Mr. Speaker, by setting out consistent standards that are applicable across the board. And it is anticipated, Mr. Speaker, that these actions would bolster the supervisory efforts while ensuring that the Federation conforms not only with the domestic obligations, but our international obligations. And at the end of the day, an effective financial services system should seek to encourage growth in commercial activity within a structure, Mr. Speaker, that is fair, within a structure that is measurable, and within a structure that is well balanced, Mr. Speaker. And the, the final thing I would wish to draw attention to, Mr. Speaker, is <clears throat> that the bill seeks to, to add clear guidance in addressing the matters of low or non-compliance within the money services business with the provisions of the Act and other related legislation, Mr. Speaker. And some, such matters would typically require enforcement action being taken by the Financial Services Regulatory Commission. And the amendments seek to provide clearer procedures for addressing any breach of this particular legislation, Mr. Speaker. And so in short, Mr. Speaker, the bill is intended to address some some very important areas, including providing opportunities for developing small businesses to have easier access to funding. Very important. And the bill also seeks to strengthen the regulatory and the supervisory abilities of the Financial Service Regulatory Commission within the non-bank financial services sector, which this is, Mr. Speaker. And ultimately, ultimately, the overall objective, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that the, the sector on a whole, the financial sector, functions at its best within a proper framework. And so as previously indicated, Mr. Speaker, our federation continues to demonstrate not only our commitment to the high standards and principles of compliance, with the best practices, but also, Mr. Speaker, for the various reasons that, that are articulated, we ensure that our financial sector remains robust, but remains clearly 
um, we, we make sure that it is regulated and it is accountable not only to our domestic space, but also the international space, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, with those few words, I commend this bill to passage to this House, Mr. Speaker.